we're recording the whole screen and at the end I can stop it, compress it, and bang it on YouTube in oh, over Greg, let's say. So it should be nice and straightforward. Now, um, first of all, setting your table out. Okay, the first thing that you need are headings. So for instance, you might have time. I'm going to totally make this up. If this is your results, then, you know, happy Christmas. And if not, then not. Okay. Um, I guess conditions. Would be, let's have a look. Yeah. And then your UV, your dark, and your light would be useful. Time, I know maybe you're doing it daily. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this don't this totally wouldn't be conditions. Apologies, guys. This I guess would be like I know number of seeds germinated. Now, first of all, this is kind of ugly because I've written in one cell and it's stretched too far. So if we highlight this, we can use merge to merge our cells, and that puts those three together. So if you've got something that's too big to write, say, I don't know, if I click on cell G5 and I want to write splendiferous face, it stretches over, but you'll notice I can also write stuff here. Woo! And now it looks messy, yeah? So what I would do is I would highlight the two cells and I would merge them together. When you've got a merge cell like this, you can also unmerge the cells to separate them back out. Let's take these, so highlight them all. If I use my hand, then I can just pull them away. Number of seeds germinated, I don't know. Let's say UV was rubbish. Let's say your dark was fantastic. And let's say your light was kind of in the middle, I know. Now, the first thing to do, since we've got a table, I guess would be to make the headings a little bit more descriptive. So time, time taken to germinate. This we can see is way, 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 way too big. If we want to automatically size it, if we go in between row B and row C, so that our cursor looks like the kind of line with the arrow either way. Double click, and it'll make itself exactly the right width. Likewise here, double click, double click, double click. Nah, that's not very nice. Yes, it does fit in, but it's not neat. So we can highlight all three, and then when we stretch them out, it'll stretch them all to the same width, because all three are highlighted. Now, I guess something to do is to format our tables a bit nicely. So let's highlight round, and we can use the borders menu, which is over here. Yup. Oh yeah, no, these are like literally just totally made up numbers, yeah? So I've put my thick box borders in, that's kind of nice. In fact, it's kind of wrong as well to do it at this stage, because you'll just, you'll be wasting time. So from up here. I can put all borders in first, that's nice, because if you're going to print it across, these little lines that you see in the background, they won't come over. And then let's use my thick box border here to separate out the various different parts of my table. You can click all borders. If you click all borders, then that will give you sort of like a uniform area of borders. But what's nice sometimes is to put a, box, a thick box border around your heading so it makes it stand apart, yeah? It's up to you. I mean, you know, this isn't like what you must do to do it perfect. This is just what I like doing. Um, if you want to as well, you can highlight, you can put your text centrally, which I think always looks quite smart. Time taken to germinate currently doesn't have a unit, so we would need to solve that. Yeah, maybe it's hours, maybe it's days. In this case, I guess it's days. Let's resize that to accept it. Number of seeds germinated is great. That is a really good raw data table. Okay, so let's take this. Oh, raw data. What you can do, if you feel like it, is you can rename the sheet. Double click on it, rename it. Then you can add a second one. Double click on it. 
if you like being really proficient. Now we can take this, we can copy it, we can paste it across. Now clearly our view is going to be a little bit squiffed. So let's quickly take care of that. I'm going to zoom in nice and close, just like last time. I'm going to spread out and we're back to being fine. Now for my data processing, I might decide to calculate these as percentages. I might decide to calculate as whatever. Just for you to know, let's say that I use 17 seeds in total. If I want to convert, if I want to draw myself a totally new table, who knows, maybe I want to take this table, copy it across, maybe I want to delete this, maybe I want to say, I don't know, percentage of seeds germinated. Now, here, this would need to equal this, divided by 17, if I had 17 seeds in total. Let's put them in brackets. Ooh. Multiplied by, use my star for multiplied by 100. Enter, zero. Now I can drag this formula out, whoop, all the way down. And I can also, I can use my blue, my little blue box at the bottom to drag this formula all the way through my table. Let's drag it all the way down here. Let's drag this one all the way down here. Okay, that's kind of nice. Now, the problem is that my numbers here, now, you don't have to do this for your data processing, I'm just doing this to generate some process numbers. Yeah? Don't worry too much about that. I can talk, I'll talk about that in detail in a sec. Now, when your numbers have come in, however you've calculated them, you'll notice that these come into like crazy numbers of decimal places. Yeah? Over here, no decimal places. Over here, seven. Not handy. Highlight your numbers and go to Format Cells. If you format cells for number down to zero decimal places, then, happy Christmas, all your cells, zero decimal places. Very nice. Now, let's quickly fix our borders, because they've, they've stuffed up. So, let's go for all borders. And then again, put my box border back around the edge. Lovely. Now, I'm clearly, at some point, going to want to graph this, yeah? Now, if I've done a time course, then what's most suited to this would be a line graph. So, I can highlight my relevant data. And I can select charts. In this case, I think I'm going to want a smooth mark scatter. Does this look about right? It looks about right, yeah? Fantastic. OK, but there's a whole bunch of stuff missing. Number one, my x-axis goes down to minus 10. Is that in any way sensible? No? That's my wax, apologies. My x-axis goes across to 8, but I only measured for 7 days, so that's also a little bit stupid. Okay, I've got a lot of things missing as well. So if we have a look at the top, there are different layouts that we can choose. Pick one that's got more than you need. Okay, pick one that's nice to delete stuff out of. Let's have a look. I think I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the first one, I think. So let's drag it down into its own space. And chart title. Let's edit this. If your, if your computer will allow you. If not, sit and wait for the wheel to stop spinning. Cancel. Chart title. Mr. Chills. Awesome. Is that a good title? You want a title which links your variables, which links your dependent and your independent variables. Yeah? I'm not going to tell you what it is. Graph to show the effect of something on something else. Likewise, your axis titles here. Give them appropriate titles. Skibbity bop. And 
swivelly fit. There we go. Very nice. Do we want this? Well, actually, it's kind of handy. I'm happy leaving that, to be honest. Not normally, but since you've got more than one trend line, it's pretty good. Next up, I can set here with my scale the major, the, yeah, the maximum and minimum values for my axis. Now, this just has to start at zero, yeah? There's, you can't have minus 10% germination, that would be insane. Okay, my x-axis looks pretty clear. Let's have a look. I'd like it to start maybe at seven. My minor unit should be ones. That's good, that's better. Next up, if I look at my chart layout tab, I can find nice things. Axis, so we've got grid lines, horizontal grid lines. Let's have major and minor. And also for my vertical grid lines, let's have major and minor. Shall we? Yeah, there we go. That's kind of nice now, yeah? That's that's a good graph. I'll make sure that here in my title there is a unit, whatever that unit's going to be. Put in brackets down here. I'm going to make sure that there's a unit as well. Unit. I'm going to put in brackets. Now if you take such a graph over and such a set of tables, raw data, process data, and graph, then you're going to be doing well on your DCP section. Also bear in mind that you need a section for qualitative data. Yeah, This is super important. Other data that you took around the side of your uh, experiment. So, for instance, any measurements of temperature or any photographs that you took or measurements of how much water you put in, any data or any observations uh, which can help you in your evaluation specifically, yeah? Because if you're like, oh, my experiment wasn't fair because people kept closing and opening the curtains in the prep room, so the natural light one didn't have natural light. No, it didn't happen. Obviously, there are no curtains in the prep room. But if that happened, if you need to provide something for that in qualitative data. So any observations or comments you make should be backed up by statements, photographs, or some form of evidence in your qualitative data section. So that's super important. Now guys, let's have a look at what happens if we do this wrong. This is what I don't want to see. I don't want to see someone who's taken their whole process data, they've gone to charts, and they've clicked line graph. Go. If you submit this graph here, I will give you no marks out of anything. It's the wrong type of graph. It's bar graph. You can't draw a bar graph for continuous data. You've got one day, you've got two days. Is it possible to have one and a half days of time? Yes, it is. We're halfway through a day at the moment. Yeah. If one and a half days wasn't possible, we would only exist at midnight. Okay? That clearly doesn't happen. Well, maybe for some of you at the weekend. Um, you've got a silly legend up here, which doesn't have anything. You've got no x and y axis variables, you've got no title. That is the world's worst graph. And it's drawn from your raw data, not from your process data. So, raw data, summarize it. Convert it into process data using whatever you want. Next up, draw me a graph. Okay? Now, the last thing that you might be thinking. is what about if I want to use my statistics? Okay? Don't worry about that for this experiment. Okay? Calculate, yeah, as long as you calculate something, don't worry about standard deviation and percentage error and whatnot too much for this experiment. Okay? If you want to, by all means you can. You can put your numbers into the stats calculator, whatever. All right? Now, let's have a look.